Okay. Welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yeah, I was saying I don't like to do these videos, just me recording. I like to have people in front of me and, and then uh, that would be wonderful that you showed up. So thanks for coming. Um, the way I want to have these kind of go, we're just focusing on one topic today. We're going to focus on twists. And I have a little bit of a, a presentation I want to give so that we have sort of this visual that we're all working on. So sometimes it's a matter of sort of understanding what are we asking our body to do and what is what is there that we're up, up to. And then I'll take you through an experience of a twist or two or sort of the principles of twisting in general or revolving and things like that in yoga. And we'll open it up for, for Q&A after that. So I think it'll be about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. I'm happy to stay on as long as you have questions, but um, that's kind of how I want it to go. All good? <laughs> all good. Okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna mute you all just for now. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to click that, Diane. Um, uh, I'm gonna mute you all for now, just for the recording piece. All right, and then I'm gonna share my screen and we'll do this. All right. All right, so we're here. We're gonna be doing these this today and next Tuesday and the Tuesday after that on these topics, twisting and forward folds and cat cows, because those are kind of the, the main um, frequently asked questions I get when I'm teaching yoga, like how do you twist or you're told not to twist? So how do we do that safely and wisely? And how do we forward fold? And then there's there's this fear of cat cow somewhere. So we're gonna talk about that on April 2nd. Um, so how to twist, we're talking about what's the spine able to do, right? So we think of the spine, it has its natural curves. It's separated between bone and soft tissue, um, for better or worse, like everyone's spine is in a different state of, of condition at this point. Right. But this is the general shape of our spine. Um, this is the general, um, makeup of our spine. And we have in the Western world delineated certain segments of our spine, which are going to be important when we talk about twists, right? So the upper part is, has a special, um, location outside the body, almost outside the torso, and it's called the neck, and we call it the cervical spine. There's there's seven cervical um, discs up there, or vertebra rather. And then the green section is around our upper spine, our torso. It's all attached to the ribs, so it has a particular connection to, um, to the breath itself in particular, and it has a, um, it's uh, has a, you know, a curve in itself. Sometimes we think of having our spine be super straight, but we have to understand that there's these natural curves that our spine has. And each of us has a slightly different um, degree of curve in our spine, right? And then the purple section down there, it's considered our low back. You can feel it. It's a lumbar spine and it, it kind of curves forward. It's got a lorgotic curve in it. Um, this is where we get our DEXA scan taken because there's no obstruction from the rib cage. So we can go right through the belly area and see what those bones are doing down there. And it also, there's like a plumb line that should be following from your ear down to your hips. And um, that's sort of the main part of the um, weight bearing aspect of our spine is like right down in the front of the lumbar spine. And then that little light purple and orange piece is nestled inside our hips. It's the pelvic area and that's the sacrum and the tailbone. So we have all these different segments of our spine and each of them have a particular sense of rotation. We're not going to think of the sacrum or the tailbone as anything moving, but we can think of the cervical spine, the neck at the very top. And if you can just be where you are right now and you can just turn your cheek over your right shoulder, turn your cheek over your left shoulder, and it has a particular range of motion, right? Usually it's got the most range of motion in your body, but you may have something going on with your spine and in your neck in particular. So there is this, this, this degree of rotation that your, your neck can have. And in, in this particular textbook, they call it a 50% degree of, of rotation that you can achieve in your cervical spine in general, right? Everyone's spines are a little bit different. The next section, that thoracic spine, that one that's attached to your rib cage, um, has about a 35%. So if you were to keep your nose and your chest in one, one line and just turn your chest towards the 
the right and then turn it over to the left. You're going to be turning just the rib cage and you'll feel how the rib cage, you know, there's like the skin will pull on the rib cage. Feel that, right? There's a certain level of, of or a certain degree of movement. And the very lower part, the lumbar spine around the belly and that area only moves a little bit because we're it's nestled inside the hips and we don't want it to actually move. So if we keep our pelvis kind of still and we just turn our belly to one direction, again, your nose, your chest, your belly button are in one line, you're turning just your belly, you don't really go that far, right? You're just turning just a little bit. And according to this textbook, it's about five degrees. So all told, if we're gonna turn, we're gonna turn our belly, then our heart, then our chin, we can achieve about a 90 degree rotation just without any, any um, you know, thrust or any arm movement or any anything like that. So in general, that's kind of as far as our spine can rotate and that's the different segments are set up to achieve that because turning and twisting and seeing what's behind us is, is a skill that helps us survive in the world, <laughs> right? Um, you know, but everybody's spine, again, has different curves, different postural alignments. So we have to just know that our, our variations may vary, actually. But thinking about that, again, where all of these things are attached, we have our head above our spine, the rib cage, and think of that the tailbone is nestled in the two halves of our pelvis. So keeping that in mind that everything is attached, our arms are really only attached to our body right here at the front of our of our rib cage. So when we're lifting our arms overhead, the shoulder blades are gliding. We can kind of do a little movement like that. So when we're using our arms to do any of the twists, we're stretching a lot of these muscles that are attached to the spine and, and gliding underneath the shoulder blades. Um, so keeping that in mind, just know that it's not just the bones that we're talking about. We're covered with tissues, like layers and layers and layers of tissues and muscles and all that. And these tissues are a lot, are coordinated. So from top to bottom, they are coordinating efforts. So there's some bands that are supporting this, this rotation that we make. And it's see how it connects all the way down to your ankles and your feet. So sometimes, uh, the amount of rotation that we can achieve in our spine has a lot to do with what's going on with our shoulders or what's going on with our, with our, with our you know, our base of our skull or even our feet or our knees. If we have an injury that can have an effect on, on the rotation that we can make in our spine, because it's all connected deep inside and inside there's a bunch of stuff that's there that, that we are using to support the spine you know, believe it or not, the organs of digestion inside and the heart and the lungs, those are all filling the gap and um, all the, the fascia that wraps around there, that is also being part of the support of our spine as we make that rotation in our spine. The diaphragm is one of the largest muscles that's attached. It's right above, right above all the organs below the, the, um, below the, the lungs and the heart that's right around here. And so the uh, diaphragm connects to all the ribs and it connects to the spine. So in yoga in particular, we're really focused on how we use the breath in a way to support the spine. And it's really important when we're working on twists and forward folds and all these things to be using the breath in a way that's really supportive of the spine, right? So with that in mind, I'm gonna stop my share. Um, and we're going to breathe a little bit. So bringing your one hand on your collarbones or like, like let's take a thumb and a finger across your collarbones and your hands on your chest and your other hand will go on your lower belly. And just for a moment, like feel like you can separate the above and below the diaphragm. So you can inhale into the upper chest. And at the very top of the inhale, the belly might come into the lower hand. And then when you exhale, let the belly draw back to your sacrum. And it's going to come back towards your sacrum as you exhale. And then the hand, the chest kind of recedes, right? So I'm just showing you in profile so I can see it. You're inhaling into the chest. The belly kind of comes out at the very top of the inhale. And then you exhale, you let it go back and everything recedes. The spine hasn't really moved, but if you do this enough, you can start to feel when you're inhaling, 
the hands might come slightly apart from one another. And when you're exhaling, they kind of come slightly closer as the chest recedes, right? And a couple more times like that, just feeling how there's length. We're finding axial extension in the spine, like there's space. Whoops, <laughs> got a little thumbs up on my gesture. And then exhaling, rooting. Nice. So with that in mind, um, actually, I'm going to take my chair here. So it looks like most of you are sitting right now, and I'd like you to, whether you're sitting on a chair or the floor, that's fine. I'm just going to sit on my chair so you can see me a little closer. So you can be sitting upright, and then thinking of that inhale into the chest, you get nice and long. You're going to exhale, belly goes back to the sacrum and turn the belly, the heart, and the chin over to one side. And then you inhale, come back. So the inhale comes back to the front. And then exhale, you're gonna do the other side. Exhale, belly goes back, belly, chest, chin, over to the other side. And then coming back, inhaling. You can release your hands and just have them on your thighs or wherever they feel more comfortable. And we're gonna also do that with the breath. So your inhale, you get long, think the front of the spine is a little extended. Exhale, draw the belly back and turn the belly, the heart, the chin, and maybe complete it with the gaze. So you're looking over one shoulder. And then you inhale, come back, bring the chest forward. Exhale, belly, heart, chin. Nice. And then inhale, coming back. So that is like the, the gist of how you're going to be rooting the, the sacrum. You're rooting that, that part that only moves at about five degrees. You're like letting, keeping space, but you're rooting and then you're turning the chest and then the, the chin over to the other side, okay? So a um, couple more things I wanna do and then we'll open it up for, uh, for Q&A. If we're going to be in a pose where we're using our arms a bit more, so sometimes we're going to be using our arms. So I'm going to be, well, actually, let me sit down on the ground for this. So we're going to be in a seated twist. Maybe you're sitting upright, like your legs are crossed or your legs are straight. And you'll inhale long through the chest. And exhale, turn the belly, the heart, the chin, and you're holding on to a knee perhaps, you're keeping yourself nice and vertical. And then spend a couple breaths there, twisting and breathing. So feel what it feels like to be twisted and breathing. And then inhale, coming forward. Exhale, release, and then you'll twist into the other direction just to see. Sometimes if there's scoliosis going on, you might be able to twist more in one direction than the other. So you inhale along through the spine. Exhale, you turn the belly, the heart, the chin, keeping yourself nice and upright in these vertical and these seated twists. Take a few breaths there. And then inhale, looking forward, exhaling, release. I want to do one more thing. We're going to lie on our backs. And we're going to um, feel what it feels like just to use that lower belly for your, your twist. So this way, with your back on the floor, your spine is secure. Hands are down by your, your side. You'll inhale here. And then exhale, draw your knees into your chest. So just using your exhale and the belly, you're drawing it in. And then inhale, we'll bring the feet back. Exhale, belly draws in, knees come towards the chest. Yes, inhaling back with the feet down. Exhaling, nice. Now from here, we're gonna inhale. And then exhale, let the knees rotate over to the left, keeping the shoulders on the floor and just feel 
the lower spine rotating the mid spine you'll inhale come back to center exhale rotate the knees over to the other side so you're just letting them rotate from the leg portion but again the hips are staying kind of neutral the spine is taking the rotation with your breath your exhale is supporting that lower spine the inhale is expanding through the rib cage nice you can go as far as your body will allow sometimes you'll go even all the way to the floor but just even just rocking back and forth is good for the um, understanding of the twist okay all right so i'm going to open it up there's a few other things i'd like to say on twists but i feel like i want to have some input from what you guys are doing you can open your unmute and you can ask any questions Yes, Zoom user. I don't know what your name is. It doesn't say what your oh, name is. Oh, Leslie? Leslie, Le hi. Hi there, Mary Beth. Um, mm -hmm. A question, when you did that with the knees up, you were you said you turned your belly, but what about the upper portion? That's what I get confused about. Yeah, so the arms are sort of giving you support, like they're kind of holding the rib cage down, and then you're rotating in the belly the the torso shouldn't really move but it would but it might like your torso there might be more of the whole body moving but if we're trying to do the twist like we're trying to mimic um mimic this belly heart chin if we're moving this first then this is going to be stable does that make sense leslie oh okay so i wasn't sure if if that if the whole torso and everything should go or whether that's okay to belly and keep the upper part yeah yeah um, well it's it's about um you know we're trying to to uh, attain a twist so we could be my my right shoulders on the here i'll do it this way so you can see the shoulder stays on the ground yeah. as the legs go this way now this may vary by person right obviously you might feel like this is as far as your knees can go. Some people can go all the way to the other end and keep the shoulder down. Otherwise, if the legs go here, the, the body's going to come up. Right. It's, it's, but using the, bot, using the breath, you can sort of find that spot where you can feel supported and not like hanging on for dear life, right? Okay. <laughs> we don't want to so, hang on for dear life. So my, I guess my question was with osteoporosis, I guess I thought the whole everything should move and not twist with just one part of the torso and the hips moving. Yeah. That's where I got confused. So it's okay to separate them out. It is. And especially if you're using the breath, I really want to emphasize that. So the thing is with, if we're using the breath, we're using that, that um, sort of bracing, I guess you want to say in an exercise term, you know, where we're supporting the spine and we're rotating and we're using like all those layers I was showing in the, in the presentation mm -hmm. before the whole body is going to be supporting this so that the right. bones aren't doing this all on their own. Ah, okay. And, and going only a little ways for a while until you feel like the, the tissues are going to, if it feels good to just go all the way over and, and very little twist is there, that's fine too. But it's not like we have to do that if we have osteoporosis. Now, oh, because okay. osteoporosis is a broad, um, it's a broad diagnosis. There could be other things going on with your body that, that, you know, preclude your twists from being a particular level of rotation. Right. You know, have you, have you broken any vertebra at this point? No, it's just lower lumbar osteo, I just found out. So, and I'll be in touch with you about that, by the way. Yeah, okay. yeah, great. Yeah. Thank and you. And all of our tissues need some stimulus. So I think it's important to do the twist mindfully, vertically when we're seated, you know, gently when we're on our back. There's some standing twists we can do in a minute too. Joan, did you have a question? Yeah, it's kind of related to the Thank same. You. I'm sorry, so it's kind of related to the same twist that you're talking about when you're lying on your back. But what about if you're doing it with just one leg? Is that okay too? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, um, it's definitely okay. So um, you're, and, and again, you're using the breath. I can't emphasize that enough. So you maybe have one leg straight, you're saying, 
and yeah. then you have one like and you bring the right. one over yeah exactly so again you're like securing the base of the spine with the exhale keeping the inhale open and just going where you start to feel you know i think with yoga we need to like be paying attention where are the sensations am i feeling it in the tissues on this you know because we first interact with it from the skin level right we can feel the skin and then there's something that may stop us like whether it's tight muscles or bone on bone but like it's the same principle where we're supporting the spine with the breath and you know so and, and if the shoulder comes off we don't need to go that far you know i'm not big on you know attaining a particular i don't know attaining a particular shape for the sake of the shape it's like listening to where our body will go does that make sense jim it does i just want to make sure i'm clear on something so it's the exhale that supports the spine both the inhale Both and the exhale that. support the exhale supports the lower spine the inhale where you're using the rib cage is supporting the uh, okay. spine i got it okay thank you yeah yeah that kind of leads me to my sort of question is that i get mixed up all the time about do i breathe in when i turn or out when i turn and do i breathe out when i I get all mixed up, especially like when I'm doing cat cow. Is it that I breathe in when I go like this? Or is there any kind of like mnemonic or cheating thing that you know of that I could like think of? That's a really great matter, question. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, so here's, here's what I know from a yoga perspective. And you can think of this, um, what we're trying to attain when we're using the breath and the spine is axial extension. So our normal back bend, why does that, <laughs> that. <laughs> our normal back bend, um, you know, I mean, sorry, our normal upper back has a curve in this direction, right? So if we're trying to lengthen that space, it's an inhale, right? And so you're thinking that the upper spine is expanded and the front of the spine is expanded with the inhale. And then our lower spine is curved in this way. And so that's gonna be lengthened by an exhale, right? So Maggie, to think of it, I think of it in a, um, is that the inhales expand and lengthen the front and then the exhales expand and lengthen the back as you're supporting the front. So you're lengthening the back. So the front of the spine lengthens with the inhales, the back of the spine lengthens with the exhales. That's good, thank you. So when we get to cat cow, that'll be really key. And some people will cue it backwards. Oh. <laughs> so that's sometimes causes of confusion is that the teachers may be cueing it backwards. But also what you need to understand is that we can always move on an exhale. It's the most supportive of the spine. The exhale will always support us. So even if we're raising our arms and we're exhaling, we're gonna be supportive. It's when we're, should be doing an exhale and we're inhaling that can like kind of lose the connection, right? So if you imagine like you're, you know, try, you should be supporting the low spine and you're inhaling, you see what I mean? Like that gets a little wonky. So you can always move on an exhale, but I would say inhales, expand exhales root does that make sense is that enough of a mnemonic i like it inhales expand exhales root i might even write it down okay <laughs> how bad my mind is these days <laughs> but it's very confusing like which are we expand i mean okay inhales expand and exhales root but are we expanding or are we or not you know like which is yeah. like if you're doing I know we're not talking about cat and cow, but like, which is the expansion and which is the, you know, which is the not expansion. <laughs> yes. So that's the other way I think of it is that the inhales lengthen the front of the spine and the exhales lengthen the back of the spine. So when we were here, when we were doing, we were doing inhale, exhale, you could have the inhales, the hands were separating the exhales the hands were kind of coming closer but the back of the spine was staying the same length you see what i mean the rib cage was returning 
Okay. Yeah. It's, it comes with practice. <laughs> And so even there's some like standing postures where, um, you know, if we were to do like standing chair pose and then a twist. So we've exhaled into the chair pose. We're gonna inhale again, lengthen the crown of the head to the um, tailbone. So keep the spine nice and long whenever, and then exhale, we're twisting into a, um, you know, it's a forward fold and a twist. So this is sort of bringing up what we're going to be talking about next week is that there's, and then we combine these movements, forward folding and twisting. How does that work? They're all kind of, again, focused on the, on the exhale. So like, for instance, you're in warrior one and you want to do a side twist, exhale. You're supporting the spine, but keeping the length. Right, so they're both at play there. Does that make sense, Laura? I see you doing it along with me. Yeah. Okay. So, so exhaling is the is the key to begin. The belly turns, the heart turns, the chin turns. Sometimes we also go into shapes with um, the intention of getting to the shape. And I really like to slow it down, do it phase by phase and feel where, where the body goes. We're not cranking into it. We're keeping the spine nice and long. We're supporting it with the breath, with those two compartments, the rib cage compartment, the belly compartment. And, and that all of that stuff in our body is supporting the spine, right? So the... Um, question earlier with the whether you can do it with osteoporosis yes and mindfully and slowly right and knowing that there's these different capabilities of different sections of your spine no question joan i have a lot of questions but i know one more question um assuming that you do it mindfully and with your breath and so forth is it you know, the one thing they always say about twisting with osteoporosis is not to twist the end of your range of motion. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I think for anybody, you don't need to go like deep, right. deep. I used to do a shanga where we would be in seated twists and we'd be binding and going really deep. And, you know, it was a younger body. Like the tissues are a little bit more <laughs> fluid at that point, you know, and also you're working up to it. Like, but there's also some people who have been doing these things for eons and their bodies are kind of there, they're capable. There's people who are a lot more elastic and, and more flexible than, than some of us. And we kind of, we have to, we have to be, this is like the ultimate yoga perspective is that you have to be here now, right? Like you have to, what is available to me today right now? And end range can shift. It can either beginning of practice, not quite warmed up end of practice you're a little bit more warmed up end range is a little bit shifted you know what I mean yeah. but we're not trying to get to this this deep 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 you know blinded crunk, cranky you know that's that's not where the yoga is the yoga is really I mean for some bodies like I say some bodies could do that still you know maybe but but the thing is it, that's not the the point of yoga is not to get to that it's to be really aware of yourself and be you know be able to breathe smoothly that makes sense thank you yeah that's really good advice i used to hurt my lower back right trying to do those things and like, oh boy i can go all the way back there and then the next day my back my lower back would be hurting yeah yeah we don't give it up i gave it up <laughs> yeah I do that way anymore yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> I just I just want to be more present. And I think that's the, the goal is not the shape. The goal is the presence. And sometimes we have to go to that unfortunate, like hurting ourselves piece to learn, <laughs> you know. Because we always more is better. Yeah. And it's also a little tricky when you're in a class and other people are doing it and you want to be, you know, attaining mm -hmm. what other people are doing and um, yeah. you know, the mind, the ego is always uh, part of the, the game plan here. 
Um, and just knowing that it is your practice, your body, there's different things going on with it. You know, there's some people who can't do any twists because of their, they have fused spines for one reason or another. You have to really not take these blanket statements. One of the reasons I wanted to do these little lessons was that, you know, we hear, oh, don't twist, you know, but it's, but it's such a variable depending on who you are, what you are, what's your experience, what you understand about what we're actually twisting um, and what you understand about the goal of yoga, right? So, you know, sometimes it's just fun to, to um, I don't know, exercise, do a bunch of things, but we also want to not, not move, right? <laughs> that's, the, that's just as detrimental as going to the end range, right? going to zero range is not, not good. I feel like one of the advantages of having done yoga, being doing yoga on Zoom, but sometimes I go in person, but I on Zoom is like, I just make it so the teacher is the only thing I see on the screen. And then I'm not, I can't compare myself to anyone else because they're not there. <laughs> it's just me. As to when I go into the class with everyone and all the mirrors, you really, you could start looking at other people, you know, Patricia. Yeah, yep. agree. Totally agree. Yeah. You're welcome, Patricia. Um, yeah, it's uh yeah, it's very true. And and also don't compare yourself to the teacher. No. You know, because my body is very different from your body and you know, just as much. And I try to keep my cueing as general as possible or give you options or things to look for or landmarks to consider in what you're feeling. It's really about what you're feeling and not what it looks like. Um, and again, it's like different day, different, different circumstances, right? Like you could be stiffer one day or less the other days. Have any questions, Diane? No, I think that's all pretty, pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, I think the breath is the key. I think that's what I'm beginning to realize that be quite honest breathe and then you go where you go mm -hmm. but you don't go the next day and and that's pretty pretty apparent I think now so it's it's all good and yeah. um, really I take it that when I'm doing twists on the floor if my shoulder leaves my shoulders leave the floor then I don't stop so I keep my shoulders on the floor and I know that if my shoulder starts to leave the floor that's when I've probably gone too far yeah. So, I, so that that's how I think about whether or not that's right. I don't know, but I kind of think well, if, if my shoulders need to stay on the floor, then and that's part of me breathing. Then if I'm lifting it up, then I'm probably not really twisting the right part of my spine. I'm twisting the top where the top doesn't need to go. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. If you're all of a sudden the whole body is going in one direction you kind of lost the revolution in the spine and and that might be where you need to go to uh, to feel it in a different part of your spine but if you want to feel it in the upper spine you want to have the spine back here you know like you notice yeah there's a lever and you know and and doing it like in the vini yoga way we do it you know, we'll do it multiple times. We'll inhale in one direction, exhale in another direction. And then you start to, the joints will go in, in your, uh, there's these, these receptors in your, in your tendons and things that'll start to go, oh, we're, we're safe here. We don't need to be super tense and we don't have to be super late. You know, we can find that middle ground of how much we can rotate and still feel supported and and that so it's the body slowly listens to itself right it's when we do these sort of fast-paced things that we can be losing our connection to how the breath is really supporting the spine yeah. well, i think i really like it slowly because it gives me time to um think and think so i can feel when it's probably not right um, yeah. and, and i like to do it slowly that's why i appreciate um your classes because it isn't based on doing a shape. It's based on where we're going or where we're trying to go, or where we're not going, but how we're going to do it. So that's why I, quite, I like it. It's good. It's interesting. It's really informative, actually, Mary Beth. Really good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's the how and and the why. Understanding that, and then how do you translate that to your body, not just the what. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Well, so next week is forward fold. So we kind of get into that idea of how does the spine go in this direction? And, you know, there's a lot of things about not rounding your spine. We'll talk about what's, what's that mean? What is that yes. rounding spine? When the spine does have natural curves, what does that mean when you're rounding your spine? And, and again, uh, you know, the breath is important. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions? I'm happy to stay on if you still have questions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. Later. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Fun. Take care, everyone. Good. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.